everybody, and welcome to a new episode of We Are The World Games. My name is Philipp Düring, and we have a guest today who, who achieved something very special. Although, due to COVID-19, most sports events are still cancelled or postponed uh, all over the world, she just set a new world record. Hello, Mareike Thum from Germany. Hi. Hello. So, um, uh, you just set a new one-hour world record. Um, in uh, inline speed skating and actually uh, I, I read that uh, this was kind of the first world record that has ever been officially uh, made. Well it's not really new because there were a couple of people who already did it but it wasn't actually done by the World uh, Skate Organization so they didn't do it official so there were a couple of unofficial world records set already and this time was the first one that we had like a rule book that tells exactly what conditions has to be for that world record and uh, how to do it. And uh, was this an idea that you had for a long time or was this born uh, because of the pandemic? Um, no, I didn't have that idea for a long time. It was uh, just because of the situation and we didn't have options to do racing. And uh, so luckily our federation um, put some energy into that and um, made it possible that we had uh, something similar to a race and uh, I think it was perfect timing so that we had something to prepare for. Okay, so uh, let's jump right into it and have a look at how you did this. We see the arena in Geisingen, I think it is. Uh, yeah. This is where you usually train. Yeah, that's the track where I usually train in summertime, so it's more or less my home track. And uh, how did you prepare for this race? Um, did you prepare for a long time and was it different from, from a normal training or how did it that go? Yeah, well, we had time now with the COVID time that we had more time for a longer preparation. So um, I'm normally not really a long distance skater, I'm more middle distance skater, so one hour is a lot longer than I usually do. So we had to change the training for that a little bit so that I do longer distances and uh, get used to skating one hour on high speed and uh, yeah. And uh, how is this uh, to race all by yourself? Is this a weird thing? Well, I like to skate in a group. That's why I do inline speed skating and not uh, ice skating or something. And um, I like to compete each other. So uh, it's, it's different if you don't have the draft of other people and you're all by yourself and um, you have to always be focused and keep your own speed and it's different. And uh, during the race, um, I guess you were pretty good and pretty well informed about uh, the times and what, what are your thoughts during this hour going uh, in circles against, uh, only against time? There, there was probably a lot too many uh, thoughts that I had uh, because uh, <laughs> would have been good if I would just be in my tunnel and um, keep skating. But I had a lot of thoughts like, oh, can I keep the time? And after five minutes, I was like, oh, it's uh, 55 minutes to go. That's probably not the best thought you can have when you have to skate one hour. And so it was quite hard. It was, um, I think, more mentally hard than it was for my body. I think, I mean, yes, for the body, it's uh, super hard to go one hour. But um, for the mental part to just keep going and keep your speed. And even if you don't make the lap times that you wanted to do, to still keep going and not stop and uh, try to get the best out of it. Uh, so it was quite hard. And did you have a plan for the, the, the hour? when? to go fast, when to maybe to go a little bit less fast or how did, did, did you yeah, uh, the, prepare mentally? The plan was uh, to keep the same speed the entire time. So that was also what I was training for, but uh, it didn't work out that well, but I tried my best. So you were too slow or too fast in the beginning? Uh, in the first five minutes, I went a little bit too fast and uh, then I had a little drop in my lap times and uh, then I had a really big low after like 30 minutes where I was really struggling because I had a little bit of cramps in my lower legs and so it was quite hard. We saw the beginning and we jumped to the end now with uh, about two minutes to go. Um, did you set a goal for yourself? Uh, how much um, distance you wanted to, uh, to make? I was planning on going for 35 kilometers. I didn't do it exactly but 
I got close to it. So I, I think it's a good first world record official one. So for the record, it was uh, 34.336 kilometers uh, exactly. So you missed uh, the 35 by 650 meters. But that sounds like uh, you might uh, want to take that on uh, some time in the future. I'm not sure if I want to try that again. I first want to see if maybe someone else wants to try and beat it. So I think then the motivation would be higher for me again to try again and uh, see if I can beat that again. But for now, I'm just happy with what I did. Also, Corona made it a completely different situation. So I had really time to prepare for it. And I think uh, in a normal season, it's hard to prepare to an event like that. And how was it received in the speed skating world? Did it get a lot of attention? Um, yeah, I think a lot of countries were looking because there was a live stream. So a lot of people were watching and um, there were no other sports events. So they had a lot of time to watch this event now. Okay, so we uh, see now the last uh, seconds here. Um, can you describe your thoughts when, you, when this hour was over? Uh, I was just happy that it's over, but <laughs> I was completely done and I had to sit down because uh, my legs were super dead and uh, I was happy that uh, my training partner, she came up with a bottle of water because it was, it was uh, 33 degrees in the arena, so it was super oh, hot wow. and uh, I was completely dehydrated and uh, so I was just happy that it's over. <laughs> Uh, in a recent interview you gave, gave I, uh, I read that you said uh, you love torturing your body to the extreme and that, you, uh, that your uh, greatest weakness is that you think too much and often lack courage. Um, so torturing your, your body to the extreme, I think you can see this here, that, that, that you really do that. Um, thinking too much, uh, you mentioned that, but lacking courage, I can really see that when you take on a, a record that, like this? Yeah, I sometimes don't have the courage to go in a race, like um, when I'm most of the time too late attacking for the win. So I'm waiting too long, that's what I said. Yeah. So in, in this kind of race, uh, I don't need that courage to do it. So it's just uh, me against my body. So I don't have to skate against anyone else. So made it a little bit easier for me. So, um, uh, could you tell us a bit about your career? Um, you started at a young age, but uh, not with speed skating, but with uh, artistic roller skating uh, or figure skating, I read. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. I started because of a friend of mine. And uh, then I wanted to try it. And uh, so I started with the roller sports in that part. And um, just a couple of years later when my training got canceled because the track was booked by inline speed skating. And then I saw that uh, there's also the possibility of just going fast instead of trying to uh, look pretty. So, and uh, that's why I wanted to start inline speed skating then in the age of like 12 or 13. So it was just a mistake in the schedule that made you uh, start inline skating. Yeah. Uh, let's come to the, the World Games. Um, you participated in uh, two editions of the World Games in 2013. You won the silver medal in uh, 1,000 meters. And in 2017 in Rotslav, you won three medals. And uh, before um, we watch uh, one of these races, um, uh, I wanted to ask you, you were carrying the flag, right? In the opening ceremony, the German flag. Can you describe yeah. how, uh, how that felt? Yeah, I was really honored that uh, they chose me to carry the, tr the flag and um, made me a little bit proud because we were a huge team at the World Games and World Cup and uh, it's always, uh, it's already like a little bit worrying that I could carry the flag. So I was really proud of that. You took part in, in pretty many competitions 2017. And uh, so you won bronze in uh, 15 and 20 kilometers. But then uh, something not so nice happened. You were disqualified in the 10,000 meter race, um, which uh, I only understood now, uh, which also disqualified you over your, um, like your number one uh, distance, the 1,000 meters. Yeah, that was um, not my best. Uh, I was fighting for the bronze medal in the points race and uh, got in a little fight with a Taiwanese girl. and. Uh, 
we were fighting pretty hard and uh, not like like fighting uh, with our hands or anything, but uh, we hit each other a little bit and she uh, crashed. So uh, that was not my best thing. And I just got disqualified for that and uh, couldn't do the 1K, which made me really, really, really sad because that's uh, the distance that I usually do my best in. And uh, So, but why did they disqualify you for another um, distance? Uh, that's the rule upon World Skate normally. I don't know. I guess it's the same rule for the World Games. So if you're disqualified by sports foul in one race, you're disqualified for the next race that comes up. So and that was the 1K in this case. And uh, today, would you say this disqualification was justified or it was a little bit too harsh? I think it was a little bit too harsh because we were fighting each other and uh, it's not really my fault that she crashed, but I can kind of understand because you have to make a decision like one second. So, and there was no video review or anything. So they just made the decision from what they saw. And uh, I think we were both fighting on the last raid for that bronze medal. And uh, I watched the video a couple of times. So we more or less kicked our skates and uh, yeah, but still I don't want other athletes to crash. And uh, so still feel sorry for that, but it happens, it's part of the racing. So this was a pretty bad experience, especially that uh, you couldn't take part uh, in the 1K race, but there was still another race, and let's have a look at that one. And Marika Toom, although she's got the outside berth and she's got her work cut out from Can there. you describe uh, what uh, went on in your head after you were disqualified and before the final in the 500 meters? Yeah, um, well, I, I was sad about it, but um, then I decided to do the 500. Normally, I wasn't even supposed to do the 500 because I'm more lo middle to long distance skater and uh, not really a short distance skater, which the 500 is. Uh, because I don't have that fast reaction and I'm not really good in the start. So it's um, not really what I normally can do. But uh, the road circuit in uh, Poland was... Uh, a little bit harder, so uh, we decided that I will do the 500 as well. Uh, you said before that uh, you sometimes lack the courage and attack too late, and now you just said, uh, okay, you're not the fastest starter, and we see that here. Like mm. uh, the other three, um, are like a meter in front of you after uh, just 10, 15 meters. Um, yeah, when you see the race now, come from behind with even a little gap. Um, how did it go? Yeah, it wasn't surprising for me that I will be in last position from the start on, but um, my coach told me before that I just should keep going and not stop at all and just uh, try to fight in, uh, for every position. And uh, that's what I did. And uh, when I came onto the straight line, on the last straight line, uh, I took the inside and I think that was the right choice and uh, got me the win. You said that 500 meters is not really your distance. Um, and I, it's quite astonishing that you won gold in 500 meters and also were, um, uh, won two bronze over the very long distance. So um, in the future, will you concentrate on the 1,000 meters or concentrate on just every distance? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm training for long distance actually, but um, I have fast legs. So if we have like a road like in Poland where it was a little downhill and then a little uphill and it was quite hard to skate. So... That's why I had the chance to uh, pass those sprinters at the end because they got tired legs from, um, because it was not a really easy road course, uh, which I liked a lot. And um, so I think if there's a road course that's still that long or a little uphill, I would still do the 500. I also did it in a world championship as well, got fourth place. So it's not that I can't do it, but it's not my favorite distance because I'm, like I said, a little bit too slow from the start off, but uh, depends on the, on the course if I can do it or not. And what does a gold medal at the World Games mean to, to you compared to maybe a world championship? Well, the World Games are only every four years, so it's like our Olympics. Uh, our sports doesn't have Olympic Games and uh, it brings together a lot of different sports uh, we're staying all together like also in the Olympics we have like a place where we're all staying and um, so it's it's basically our Olympic Games so it's uh, the biggest thing that we can achieve in our sport 
Another thing I, I read is that um, you started um, trading in ice uh, speed skating um, to maybe take part uh, in the Olympics. Yeah, that's okay. the plan for now. See if there is a season this year because of Corona, so we don't know yet. I will do the decision in end of August uh, if there will be a World Cup anyway this year. And first of all, I have to qualify for the German team. So. And can you I say something about the differences between uh, going on roller skates and ice skates? Yeah, well, ice skating is uh, all by yourself on time. And uh, speed skating is in a group, so uh, it's a lot more fun for me, but... Um, well, I thought you would say something about the uh, technique that you can, I don't know, that, that what you do with your legs or with your body, but um, the, is it the so technique similar? Looks, it looks the same, but it's completely different. So oh. you need a lot more power and a lot more... Um, it, it's too similar to be the same. It's, uh, I can't really explain that, but uh, it's a different sport. It's not the same. And um, you told me before that uh, the German championships uh, take place in a different form with fewer audience and uh, with uh, like ice speed skating that you start uh, every, every athlete starts on its own. How do you see the situation in the next months? Yeah, for me, the inline season is almost over already because the ice starts in September. But uh, for now, we still have the nationals in Groß Gerau and uh, we'll have time trials for every distance. So. I think it's good that we still have like a race that's coming up at the end of the season. And um, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I don't think that it's really smart to do normal races already because of the COVID situation. And so um, I take what I can take for the racing and uh, have a goal to train for. And uh, yeah, the, the World Games uh, that should have uh, taken place in 2021 have uh, already postponed uh, some time ago to 2022. But uh, we very much hope that we will see you in Birmingham, Alabama in 2022 as part of the speed skating. And we will see uh, what distance uh, you will take on. And thank you, Mareike, for the interview. Thanks to you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to like our video. Um, we will be back with a new video soon. Bye-bye.